So what's it like using the GLE dashboard for the Suron X? Ludicrous mode! Woo! That's coming right up. Hey everyone, my name is Rick Cordero. Welcome to Run Playback, where we help you with video and tech tips to lead a more efficient and affordable lifestyle. Let's be creative and save money at the same time. Today, we're gonna to walk through the GLE dashboard, an app developed by Greenline Engineering for the ASI BAC 4000. The GLE dashboard allows you to tune and configure every aspect of your vehicle. We'll go over the features and see how it performs with our 72 volt Suron X. So let's get to it. So before we begin, let's talk about the common way most riders would tune their ride through the Egg Rider display. While the Egg Rider combines a minimalist display with a custom app, the user experience felt very broad. I'll be honest, after the first time applying my settings to the Egg Rider, I never really went back. Outside of adjusting my power settings, I kind of just left it alone. Part of it was laziness, but mainly I kept forgetting how to save settings since there's a specific way to do it. Now as someone who can appreciate a solid UX, I was definitely excited for the GLE dashboard to launch. Now before we get to the walkthrough, be sure to contact GLE if you need to upgrade your harness or require a firmware update. Once you have everything installed, the GLE dashboard will be fully functional. So let's walk through the app. So first we'll turn on the bike. Turn off the lights, we don't need that. And then we'll open up the app. I'm using an Apple iPhone and you'll see that the GLE dashboard is connected to the bike. So let's walk through some of the icons on the home screen. You have the night mode or daytime mode. I like to keep it on night mode. Um, over here on the bottom left, you have your regen. Over to the right, you have ludicrous or street mode. Fast and slow above that. You have the screen lock right here. Obviously the Bluetooth, motor temperature, battery level, controller temperature, your speedometer on the left in the middle, uh, your drive modes right here. And then on the right is your amps, your amp gauge. For the icons on the home screen, if you want a shortcut to get into the menu, you just long press. For example, I'll long press regen, and it brings me to the regen uh, menu. But let's go back. So in the center, we have D highlighted. That means it's in drive. So when I pull the throttle, the wheel starts spinning. Click the center, put it in park. That means that the bike is in park, throttle doesn't work. Also, the wheel is locked up. Neutral means that the throttle doesn't work, but I can push the bike along and the wheel isn't locked. And then we have reverse, and reverse is actually speed limited, so you don't hurt yourself. Uh, so when I pull the throttle, this is full throttle in reverse and you'll notice that the wheel is spinning really slow. This is like if you're in trails and things like that and you need to back out of something, uh, you put it in reverse and you move out slow. So that's pretty cool. We'll put it back on drive. Now let's walk through the rest of the settings. So we'll hold down the settings button up here on the upper left, press that. Uh, we have the max speed gauge and that's set to 90. You could change this around. You can make it 60 miles per hour 75 miles per hour. Uh, this just gives you the range that you see in the display. Same thing with RPM. We're just gonna leave that alone. Uh, you have the over temperature buzzer. We like to keep ours on. So if uh, there's a high temp, either in the controller or the motor, uh, it'll start buzzing. You can also change Fahrenheit or Celsius. We like to keep it on Celsius since there's a big global community with the Suron. And when you share temperatures, it's always good to keep it in a kind of universal setting. For miles, we'll keep it at miles per hour since we are in the United States, okay? So we'll save that, move on to the next icon, is triangle. So this is the motor temp threshold over here on the right. You have reduced power and cut power. So, we put our cut power at 130 Celsius. Uh, you could lower that if you want to be more conservative. Uh, that's sort of like a, as far as we'd go. Uh, I don't think we'd ever make the motor go that hot, but that's the cutoff temperature. It'll start reducing the power at 110 Celsius. So you can uh, play with these settings. I wouldn't go past 130. 
you want to be more conservative, you could bring it down to 100 Celsius. If the motor gets too hot, it will start to demagnetize and you don't want that to happen. For the controller temp threshold, you actually can't change this. It's a setting within the ASI BSC 4000 and they won't let you change that to protect the controller. Over here is the fault warnings on the left side. And if you get a fault, you just go into this menu and then you, uh, you click into it and you clear it out uh, before you restart your bike. This will also help diagnose any issues if you need to bring it to your distributor. Next icon is the throttle tune. So this is pretty cool. Um, if you've ever calibrated a bike before or a drone or anything like that, this menu will look really familiar. Uh, so this is really simple. Over here on the right, you'll see the real-time throttle voltage. Uh, you see these numbers moving, kind of stuttering there. So if I pull the throttle, you'll see that the voltage engages, right? Now when we start the throttle tune, the wheels actually won't spin, which is, which is good. So let's start the throttle tune. Okay. One, pull it again. Two, pull it again. Three. So the tune basically takes the average of the three times you throttled and it creates this uh, voltage number. So we'll save that. Parameter is successfully flashed. Good to go. So now we'll move to the center, which is the regen brake tune. This is very similar to the throttle brake tune that we just did, but instead of the throttle, we'll be using the regen brake, which is this over here. So you'll notice the dead band value is 0.15. We'll keep that there. We won't change that. And then you'll see real-time voltage. Again, when I press down the regen brakes, you'll see the voltage pop up. So let's start the regen brake tune. Go hit start. Press it once, all the way down. Press it again, all the way down. And a third time, all the way down. And there you go. Creates the average, and then we just save that. Done. Uh, if you go down here, you'll see the braking modes. So here we have the separate regen brake which is this guy right here. But we are going to try to connect it to our Magura MT7E. Uh, I think we're gonna need a splitter, a Higo splitter, to go from our brake sensor, which uh, activates our brake light, uh, and hopefully it'll also activate the regen brake so we don't have to have a separate throttle over here. So we'll probably do that next uh, for our next mod. So you'll see here we have the regen brake separate, left-hand throttle, yep, that's what we want. Uh, if we wanna do a roll-off throttle. This is similar to the stock bike, the stock Suron, where when you let go of the throttle, it starts to regen. Some people like that uh, because they like the feel of the resistance. It feels like a two-stroke or something like that. I personally don't like it. Um, it feels like it weighs the bike down. I feel like I'm losing momentum, so I like to keep that off. Uh, you could also do the e-brake motor cutoff. So this is no regen. It'll just sort of cut the motor off. Um, again, that was similar to the stock bike, but it had regen and cutoff on the, on the brake levers. And then you have wheelie mode, which is no regen. Um, and this is actually more appropriate for when we connect it to our Magura over here, because when we do wheelies, we're, we have our uh, index finger here on the left brake, and we don't want regen to activate. So here's where you would um, choose that. Uh, but it wouldn't really make any difference if you have a separate throttle over here because um, most likely you'll be using the uh, caliper and not this. All right, so we'll keep it on um, separate region brake, left-hand throttle, we'll save that. Move on down. Didn't really change anything here. You can kind of like play with these settings in terms of the, uh, the speed and the, how much of the battery current that region will use torque, things like that. Uh, I leave it alone. I think the regen is fine. Uh, and then you have some more settings over here, which I'm not quite sure what they do. Miscellaneous. Okay, let's move on. All right, motor settings and tuning. You'll see at the top, rated motor peak phase current, 431 amps. Uh, that is the recommended settings for this BAC 4000. So we don't want to change that. Maximum field weakening, we set to 10%. 
Now field weakening is something where uh, you can increase the RPMs to get a higher top speed. So you wanna be careful with this setting. Uh, this is something that we're familiar with with our Grintech phase runner. And uh, it gives you a little bit more top speed um, when you inject field weakening into the motor. But uh, again, be very conservative with this uh, because you don't wanna heat things up too much. Um, gear ratio over here, 6.5. Um, when you're calibrating the speedometer, uh, you're going to want to increase or decrease this depending on uh, if it matches up with your GPS. So we're going to try that in a few. We're going to have our app opened up, our GLE dashboard, and then another phone with a GPS speedometer app. If you look over here, you see alternate power limit enable off. So if you set that on and you save it, you go back to the home screen, it basically makes uh, on the bottom here street mode. That'll be your default when you start uh, the bike, or when you start the app. So um, again, if you want street mode to be default, go back here, motor icon, make sure that the alternate power limit enable is on. If you take it off, we save, and we go back to the home screen, you'll see that ludicrous is the default. And, you know, when you start the bike, you don't want it to be in ludicrous mode, so definitely recommended to keep this on to start off in street mode. Okay, we'll save that. You have here a speed regulator mode, so we actually have that enabled. Uh, so that gives you torque with speed limiting. That means that your uh, street mode and ludicrous mode retain their torque, but you can actually put limits on the top speed. I think what's really cool is you could save custom profiles. So if you have a beginner who wants to try the bike, uh, you could have these limits set really low so they don't hurt themselves. As far as the maximum standard speed, we kept it at 10 miles per hour. Uh, vehicle maximum 75 miles per hour, and that's the speed limits that you can create. Uh, the wheel diameter is at 688 millimeters. You can change this to also calibrate your speedometer. We're gonna kind of leave the wheel diameter alone because, you know, different wheel sizes and things like that, it could get really confusing, uh, but you can actually change that if you need to. So we'll save. Next, we'll do the analyze motor resistance and inductance. So before you run the motor tuning, you wanna make sure that the wheel is off the ground. So make sure you have a stand on the bike because the wheel will start spinning and you could get hurt. So over here, you see the run now tab. Uh, we're gonna hit run now. So you heard that weird sound. Um, so that was the auto tune for the uh, LS and RS. So you'll notice that the Auto-Tune LS is 41 and the Auto-Tune RS is four. Uh, so those are good numbers for Auto-Tune LS. The range is somewhere between 37, 49, and then Auto-Tune RS is something like three and three to seven. So uh, that means it worked. You wanna make sure that you have these results. If you don't do run now, uh, your motor won't tune correctly. So definitely hit that run now and you get these uh, results over here. So we'll save the results. Be sure to save as well. Each time you make a change, save it. Uh, then we have the analyze the hall wiring, offset and rated motor speed. Again, same thing. You see all these parameters here at zero. If they're at zero, uh, you will have some errors and nothing will happen. So uh, you wanna hit run now to get the results. Again, make sure that your wheel is off the ground. So wheel is spinning. It's analyzing the hull wiring, motor speed. All right, so here are our results. I don't understand most of these numbers, but we have results, so that's good. All right, so we save it. We have additional tuning information. I didn't mess with any of these. Um, you probably could, but uh, I didn't. <laughs>
as well as the censored motor configuration settings. I didn't mess with this either. All of this uh, on the bottom here, I left alone. So the next icon over here, which is the battery icon, is obviously the battery voltage selection and power settings. So again, our rated motor peak phase current is 431 amps. For street mode, we kept our power level to 3800. We can increase that if we want to, but that seems to be a nice conservative uh, power level. Ludicrous mode, uh, we have 12,000 watts. I know a lot of people have pushed this bike to 15,000 watts. Uh, we don't really need that kind of power. <laughs> uh, so 12,000 watts seems like it's more than enough for us. In fact, I'd probably lower it to maybe 10,000. Um, but that's kind of the max that we'd want to put it at with this 72 volt battery. And then over here, battery voltage, obviously, we have the Shy Battery Systems Gladiator X 72 volt. And that's over here, the 20S 72 volt. And what's cool is you can save different profiles. If you want to use the stock battery, uh, you could save a different profile and, and do a 60 volt. Just changing it just like that through this menu is super easy. Um, max battery current, we kept at 100%. Ludicrous mode, max battery current, 100%. Save. So here's the tab for the last icon. And you'll see at the top, positive motoring torque ramp. So this is really cool. Uh, you would decrease this number if you want more punch uh, and increase it if you want to smooth out your throttle. And that's really, really cool because, um, you know, for example, if you want to do street riding and you maybe want a little bit more punch to get the bike up, to get the wheel up, you could de decrease this number. Um, but if you're like on the trails and you want a little bit more of a smooth throttle, you increase it. So anywhere from like 50 to 150 is where you want to be in terms of range. 50 for more punch, more torque, 150 for that smooth throttle. I think that's awesome. I think that's like such a cool feature. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, complain about the stock throttle. They maybe upgrade to the Magura throttle or, you know, the uh, Domino throttle. And I think that if you have this app, you can actually change the parameters uh, and make whatever throttle you have more to your liking. So I just want to give you guys a warning. If you change these settings, uh, you might get hurt or the bike might get damaged. So underneath positive motoring torque ramp, you have the current regulator bandwidth in radians. Now, if you change this to 4200, Oops. Uh, basically, that will give you higher top speed. Uh, you could also go back to the field weakening and inject a little bit more field weakening to make it even crazier. But if you want a crazy top speed, you change this setting to 4200. Now, if you want crazy torque or sicko torque, shout out to John Angel. I'm stealing that sicko, sicko phrase with the uh, Onyx sicko mode. But uh, if you want sicko torque, you can change the current regulator KI to 220. And then the current regular KP to about 1.1. These two settings will give you sicko mode, top speed, and torque. We're not gonna do it, so do it at your own risk. Okay? We're not gonna save that. <laughs> Okay, so now let's go to this Bluetooth icon over here. So we'll press the Bluetooth. So if you scroll down, you'll see telemetry, graphical data and export, so we'll view that. So you see all these different settings, watts, motor RPM, battery voltage, battery amps, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is pretty cool if you wanna test out different batteries. So battery voltage and battery amps, if you start the telemetry. Okay, stop telemetry. Look at the, uh, get to export to a CSV. We can look at the peak. And you could study these settings if you wanna diagnose different parts of your bike. Now, if you wanna save the settings, go back to settings over here. Go to the triangle icon, scroll down, settings history. So I think this is really cool to save different profiles. Like I said, 
Uh, maybe you have a beginner profile or an eco profile for someone who uh, you could put all the limits so they don't hurt themselves. Or you could have a street profile that's um, calibrated for street riding, uh, something for off-road, that kind of thing, trails. So this is really cool to uh, save your profile settings and not have to change it each time you go riding. If you follow this channel at all, you know how much we love calibrating our ride exactly to our specs. While most tuning apps require a pretty high level of knowledge about e-bike settings, the GLE dashboard is simple yet powerful. The best part is that it takes just a few minutes to tune and dial in your settings. Now let's calibrate our speedometer. All right. Right now it looks like the GLE dashboard is just a little bit higher. Definitely almost uh, 10 miles per hour faster. So I think we can adjust that. 20 miles per hour on the GLE dashboard, about 10, 10 miles per hour on the speedometer app. So let's tweak that and see. We want to decrease this. Make that six point, uh, let's try 6.2. Okay, I'll save that. Let's see what it looks like now. Ooh. Still looks like it's calibrated way too much. Almost 10 miles per hour more. Let's go lower this time. Uh, gear ratio, let's do, let's just do five, see what happens. Yeah, that is definitely not calibrated. <laughs> 20 miles per hour, yeah, still 10 miles per hour too fast. What if we increase it? What happens if we increase it to eight? Does that slow us down? Let's see. All right, here we go. Closer. Let's try 10. See what that does. Here we go, save settings. Okay. Ooh, that's really close now. I think we're calibrated. 15, 13 on the GPS. Okay. Uh, Let's do 12 this time. Save it. Nine, nine on the GPS, 11. 11 on GLE dashboard, 12 on the GPS. Yeah, I think we're, this is pretty accurate. Definitely accurate, I think. Let's see. All right. Slowing down. Yeah, I think we're calibrated. I think we're calibrated. Yes. Yep. We are, we are good to go. Now let's do a ride demo with the GLE dashboard. Yes, we're limited to 10 miles per hour. So I'm pulling the throttle full speed and it's keeping me at 10 miles per hour, approximately. Since we're calibrated, that's the approximate speed that I'm at, which is pretty sweet. Uh, let's go to fast, pick the speed up a little bit. Okay, now we are in fast mode in street. Again, I'm doing uh, 3,800 watts, I believe, on street. All right. Uh, overall, the, the tune feels amazing. I mean, this is like, it feels super, super smooth. So nice. Way better than, you know, the, uh, the default tune that I had. Um, you could just feel it. Everything just feels so calibrated. 
I'm gonna pull over, let this car go by. While we're here, we can check out the uh, reverse mode. Press reverse. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm moving in reverse now. <laughs> so that's really nice to kind of get out of a tough spot. Again, it's really slow, so it's not gonna, you know, flip me over or anything. Let's go back to drive. I'm gonna turn here. Try to get some uh, clear, clear streets if I get closer to downtown. So you can see the phase amps, you can see my speedometer. The uh, field oriented control uh, really, you know, kind of pushes the volts, pushes the amps in a way that makes it more efficient. Uh, so you're not just like smashing bolts into the motor. And that's, uh, that's kind of what my experience is with uh, when you activate uh, controllers with really fine-tuned FOC. It just, it's quiet, it feels good. I mean, it really feels like a completely different bike, to be honest, like no lie. We're going to uh, telemetry so we could kind of actually see what's happening uh, with the telemetry while I'm riding. Okay, we'll view telemetry. Uh, we could just do the battery settings, see what that looks like. Start telemetry. See the telemetry data as I throttle across. It's really nice to see all that information. Throw my lights on since I'm downtown. Uh, yeah, I mean, everything feels so good. I'll stop the telemetry now. And go back. It's a nighttime mode right now. We can switch it to daytime. Get a better. Uh, oops. There you go. And it actually looks better since my uh, helmet visor is tinted. Uh, the contrast is actually better with the white background. Across here. Street mode is really good for this kind of riding. Got to stop and go. Not really uh, hitting any uh, high speeds with this kind of riding, which is which is fine. This is kind of how we like it. start turning now again like I said I'll probably connect the regen to my Megura MT7E because it does have a two-pin Higo which actually connects to the GLE harness so if you want to incorporate uh, regen into your brake lever um, you could use the Megura MT7E cross this all right, so I'm using regen right now, pumping the brakes. Feels good. Not sure what this car is doing. So that's my regen. You can see, I think you can see it in the uh, dashboard when it kicks in. Uh, let me change it to nighttime mode. Yeah, this, uh, this bike just feels really well-tuned. Feels really good. Uh, regen again. Yeah, the regen feels feels good. It doesn't. Um, it's not too harsh. You know, it's not really like stuttering the bike or locking the, the wheels up. I think the speed limiter is really really sweet. Uh, if you do want to register this as a moped, be able to you know have this thing limited to 30 miles per hour uh, is 
ideal, especially if you're getting the bike uh, inspected or whatever. Um, this is a perfect way to do that. Do ludicrous slow. Now ludicrous slow is going to keep us at 10 miles per hour again, but it's giving us all the torque. Um, which, you know, can't really tell since I'm going uphill here, but it is uh, providing the torque, but it is limiting it. So even though I'm full throttle, it's keeping me slow. Let's, uh, let's go to ludicrous fast. Okay. Now I'm not, not trying to uh, give it full throttle right here since it's still very icy. Yeah, you definitely feel feel the power in ludicrous mode. <laughs> oh yeah, wow, it's super cool. Okay, there's a bus. Regen there. Holy crap. Oh my god. <laughs> this thing is so amazing. Oh my god. So awesome. Seriously, this, guys, this, this feels like a totally different bike. This, um, I gotta hand it to, to Greenline Engineering. Um, when I was looking for a BAC 4000, I knew that these guys were gonna have an app out, and I didn't fully grasp how much experience they have in user experience in uh, programming but like having this app is i mean every bike every single bike should have this app not just sarans with asi controllers but like every single bike um and i'm you know maybe not maybe there there are people who would uh you know, screw their bikes up or hurt themselves <laughs> trying to program this thing. But um, man, just the ability to to really unlock and fine tune everything about the bike from the throttle to the motor to um, the regen. It's just, it's just so amazing to have that capability, to have that freedom to do that. I think that's, uh, I think that's really cool. So that's our first look at the GLE dashboard for our 72 volt Suron X. Overall, we're really satisfied that we went with our BAC 4000 kit from GLE since the app makes it feel like a completely different bike. Now you're probably wondering, how do I get this app if I bought my kit from somewhere else? Well, GLE will introduce a harness kit that will make any ASI controller compatible with their app. If you're interested in purchasing this kit, check out our promo code below. If you want the ability to have an all-in-one display, tuner, diagnostic, and dyno tool in a single app, then the GLE dashboard is a solid recommend. If you want to dive into more video and tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.